So, NMC, which is the Nursing Majority Council, expect us to have 2,300 hours. So, obviously, if you actually think about it, the amount of time you spend on your placement actually amounts to more than 2,300 hours. However, in my point of view, it's like, why do I have to go and kill myself and do 2,700 hours when the NMC requires 2,300 hours? Seriously, guys, I can't go kill myself. If the NMC wants 2,300 hours, 2,300 hours is what I will give them. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me once again back onto my channel. My name is Belinda and if you've not already subscribed, please don't forget to press the subscribe button as well as turn on your notification bell so you get a notification every time I upload. Today guys, I am back again with another nursing video. As you read from the title of this video today, I'm going to be talking about what do student nurses in the UK actually do on placement when they are on placement. So I'm just going to be talking about reality versus expectations of basically being a nursing student, what to expect on clinical placements, how to make up your hours. So if you are interested in knowing more, then keep on watching. So first things first, the NMC, which is the Nursing Midwifery Council, expect a total of 2,300 hours to be made up. So you've got the whole of the three years, which is the typical amount um, of years obviously that you need in order to get your BSc honors in nursing here in the UK so by the time you hit third year and you hit your management placement by the end of that management placement you need to have accumulated 2300 hours even if you do a dual registration so that's basically the four year degree where you are doing either of adult nursing mental health nursing mixed together the NMC still requires that 2300 hours that is the basic hours that the NMC requires so either either three years four years you still need to have 2300 accumulated hours of clinical placements by the end of your nursing course. So in this video, I specifically want to focus on what student nurses actually do. So first things first, I want to pin out the point that as a student nurse, you are supernumerary. So what is the meaning of supernumerary? Supernumerary basically means student nurses cannot be counted as part of the workforce when on clinical placements. So if somebody calls in sick on that specific placement that you are placed, it is not your responsibility to step in and make up the numbers for that specific person who rang in sick. And it is really sad because some wards will count students as numbers. Um, however, in my personal opinion, if they had to count me as numbers, um, that's something that I would bring up. You are there to learn, you are not getting paid. Guys, remember the 2,300 hours, your clinical placement is an unpaid um, placement. There was a time period when nursing students were getting paid, but that was because of the whole COVID, the whole pandemic. However, that's scrapped now, it's cancelled, it's back to, you know, the way it normally always used to be. Student nurses are not getting paid on clinical placements. So, back to the discussion, guys. I seem to always go off topic, but back to this discussion, guys, basically about what student nurses actually do. I really wanna discuss this, especially if you are one of those people who have never worked in care before. What I mean is some people go straight into nursing and they've never worked in care before. Like, when I talk about working, I'm not talking about volunteering um, for a couple of hours here, there, everywhere. I'm talking about doing a full 12 hour shift, both days, both nights, weekdays, weekends. That is what I'm talking about. It doesn't necessarily have to be a 12 hour shift. However, doing a 12 hour shift is more ideal because most of the time students are required to do a 12 hour shift. So what I do wanna say is, in my last placement prior to this placement that I'm on at the minute, I was working on a respiratory ward and a year one student joined us okay and obviously on the ward i was having a discussion with her in regards to oh how are you finding your placement and she turned around and said to me you know what belinda this is totally not what i expected i asked her what do you mean what did you expect and she said to me you know i didn't know that you know nurses get involved in regards to personal hygiene they get involved in regards to toileting patients okay Anyway, so I was like, nurses do everything. Nurses basically are one of those 
job specifications that you learn how to multitask that is nursing and um, that is a bit unfortunate because the student that I did speak to when I asked her have you ever worked in care before prior to obviously do, doing your nursing and she turned around and said she's never done care before not even on a volunteer basis she's cared for a family however guys I do want to put a disclaimer out there by no means am I saying that caring for family is not doing care however it's a different type of care caring for your family is not the same as caring for somebody that you don't know it's not the same as doing a 12 hour shift on a busy ward with a high turnover of patients it's totally different so mostly if you've never actually worked in care before you might think that nurses only administer medication um, get involved in nursing assessments implement nursing care plans um, do injections draw blood performing CPR you know all those fancy things that nurses are supposed to do registered nurses do all those things however nurses help out on the floor as well okay they are doing ACA jobs they're doing the nursing jobs sometimes they're taking on the kitchen job there's no housekeepers to give out dinners and um, nurses do do that however they do get involved basically in anything related towards person-centered care and that is very important to remember that okay so when you are expected to wash or shower a patient that as a nursing student is something that you'll have to do now what you are expected to do on a nursing placement is determined by two major things all right two major things the first one is obviously what year you are in i remember telling you guys in my video where i did my first year as well as my second year you know passing first year passing second year what nursing students are expected to do in your first year you know that you have a limited amount of knowledge so in your first year they don't expect that much from you so in your first year you will obviously take part in personal care you will take vital signs of the patient just familiarize yourself with vital signs of a patient i've got a whole video on vital signs so vital signs is one of those things that it doesn't matter what ward you go to it is one of the basic, basic, basic nursing skills that you need to learn within your first year. I'll leave that video somewhere up here as well as down in the description box below. If you're interested, you can go and have a look after this video. So going back to what you need to know by the end of the first year is you need to know your vital signs. What is the normal range and when is a patient showing that they're either deteriorating or not scoring within range? That is the first thing that you need to do within your first year. You need to have that sort of knowledge in addition to that you need to build up your communicational skills as well as ability to interact with various patients as well as with various MDTs so multidisciplinary team professionals they're trying to make you get more comfortable they observe how you interact so if you are a shy person because at the end of the day guys we all have different personalities okay so if you're a shy person that is your time to actually you know try to build your confidence try to build up your um, communicational skills with other people that is what you need to be able to do the second factor is what type of placement you are placed if that makes any sense so we have various sort of specialities or placements that students go under for instance with me in my first year as i was doing mental health nursing i was placed in a psychiatric hospital i had gp um, placements okay so gp placement is obviously different to what you would be doing if you're working on an acute setting i had a nursing home that was in my first year second year i had a respiratory ward as well as a surgical ENT ward in my final year guys I had a cardiology as well as at the minute I'm on a surgical assessment unit so those were my seven placements that I had um, within the three years so obviously each placement I've went to have different ways of doing different things and like i said with the gp surgery i went to it was basically from eight o'clock till half past five and um, four days a week weekends off so obviously in a gp surgery guys it's not the same as working on the ward because in a gp surgery you are not giving personal hygiene to patients it's patients that come in to see you and tell us what's wrong so in in a gp surgery it was more of wound care giving vaccinations 
things like that which was different to when i was on a ward okay and obviously like i told you guys in my video when i did mental health nursing in my first year then i transferred over to adult nursing in my second year it was also totally different what i did when i was doing mental health nursing in a hospital setting is totally different to what i'm doing at the moment while being an adult nursing student on a general hospital if that makes any sense bottom line is each placement has different types of routine as well as certain medication now what i mean by this is if you're working on a cardiology ward there's certain types of medication that you will administer on a cardiology ward that you would not administer on a respiratory ward if that makes any sense sometimes most of the time you come across a medication that's more common on most wards that you go on to so going back to obviously expectations versus reality of being a nursing student let's talk about the roles of student nurses okay the role of a student nurse is that they take on the responsibility of both let me rephrase that not really responsibilities but you take on the role of both healthcare system as well as a registered nurse nursing students are basically between nurses and healthcare assistants okay now you might think what I mean by that nursing students need to be able to obtain the skills as a registered nurse as well as obtain the skills of a healthcare assistant and HCA so while you're a nursing student I would say that you are basically in between of the two all right and that is very important that you need to be aware of that that as a nursing student you need to be able to do a bit of both so you will be assisting patients with elimination needs you will be answering buzzers you will be administering medication obviously with a supervised nurse so I do want to put a disclaimer out there you will never 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 be able to administer medication by yourself if you are not with a registered qualified nurse to supervise you while you are doing the administration of medication you will be doing the nursing assessments which is obviously when a patient is admitted on the ward and even if a patient is not admitted on the ward if the patient's person-centered care has changed you will be doing that assessment in regards to that so basically you are doing a bit of everything really and it's very important that you take this as a learning curve because that's the only way you can basically grow now depending on who you are and um, your mentor we call them supervisors and assessors now they will take into account the amount of supervision you will need if you're one of those students who's quite confident and your assessor or your supervisor can rely on you to do certain things without them supervising you obviously when i'm talking about supervision there's certain things that they don't need to supervise you with for instance if a patient is admitted on the ward i can do the full assessment without supervision um, i just normally go ahead if i'm writing in the patient's nursing evaluation notes i'll just go ahead and take the nursing evaluation notes to the registered nurse to countersign okay so whatever i do i always take it to the nurse to countersign because that's very important so if you know your stuff they will decide on the amount of supervision that you will require however from your first year all the way to third year you will always be supervised no matter what until you get your nursing pen then you won't be supervised anymore then basically you will be by yourself as well as a student nurse you need to be able to know what are your limitations so in other words you need to work within your scope so you need to know what is your limit what you can do and what you can't do because it's not everything that you can do and you need to really be aware of this because not all nurses that you work with or supervisors that you will be working with are aware of what you can do and what you can't do hence it is your responsibility as a student nurse to stay informed with what you can do and what you can't do if that makes any sense so like I said you have to do all of these things and sometimes it can get overwhelming like what's going on but if you are feeling overwhelmed like you feel like you've got loads of things to do my advice is to prioritize when you become a qualified nurse the word that you will hear all the time is to prioritize what takes prioritization is it attending to a patient who is scoring nine on the ews or is it doing an admission which one takes priority you understand what i'm saying so certain things can actually wait and it's fine for those things to wait so next you might be wondering is how on earth do i remember everything now the fact of the matter is you can't remember everything and you know what that's fine too you need to find a way to work okay you need to find a way to 
make things easier for yourself and i can't tell you that how it must be done you need to find that balance personally as to how you can start doing one task at a time if that makes any sense now with me up to this day guy i carry a notebook year one i carry a notebook year two i carry a notebook year three i carry a notebook reason being is because sometimes you've got so many things that you need to do you need to jot down things just to remember having a notebook is very important guys when you're on placement because if any other medication that you've never heard of comes up you can write the generic name of the medication write what the medication is for as well as side effects of that specific medication so lastly guys wrapping up this video because i know it's been a long video and hopefully you understand now what student nurses actually do on placements i'm talking specifically about the uk important 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 to make everything easy for you as a student nurse is basically learn the routine of the specific ward that you are placed on every ward that you go to has their own routine the first two weeks they will normally make you work with hcas you know with healthcare assistants as a student nurse just so that you can familiarize yourself with the ward thereafter know the routine if the university issue out the placements that you are going to you need to learn what ward you are going to if for instance they say you're going on a respiratory ward google what do they do normally on a respiratory ward what are they looking out for what is it about so by the time you actually go there you've got more of an idea on what is expected of you if that makes any sense this video was so yes guys i hope this video was very helpful um i hope it makes more sort of a clear understanding in regards to the reality of being a student nurse on clinical place and what is it that you actually do and um, I will be obviously making that video soon about ways to learn various medications. All the other videos that I mentioned in this video, guys, will be linked down in the description box below. So if you are interested, you can go ahead and go ahead and click on those. And yes, guys, this brings me to the end of my video. I really hope you like this video, guys. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I will hopefully, hopefully, hopefully see you guys in my next video. Bye.